Hall materials. There's so many differing opinions on which is the best one, but in reality, they all have their pluses and minuses. Now, instead of me just talking to you guys about the different types of Hall materials, I decided to interview people who have those boats and cruise on them and live on them full time and know those Hall materials through and through. So in today's episode, we're gonna be looking at plywood hulls. My name is Tom Stinsbeck. I'm a German national. This is Uta. Okay, the, um, uh, this boat is a Bruce Roberts design. This is an Australian guy who is well known actually in Australia and the Anglo-Saxon world. And I built the boat myself. I bought the plans almost 20 years ago and then didn't do much with them at, the f at first. Uh, the boat is 65 feet long. It's a catamaran. It's made out of uh, plywood. The building method is called wood epoxy because you actually built the car like as, like, as in a sandwich, you built the car from plywood. In this case, birch ply was used. And then you uh, put a layer of fiberglass, or many layers of fiberglass and um, epoxy uh, on the inside and outside. Yes, okay, I must say that at first I was looking at um, different types of boats and different types of materials. In the end, uh, I settled for this one, but first I was seriously looking into building a boat from aluminum. The um, there are pros and cons, of course, about you know whichever building method you look at. A definite pro, of course, of this material here is that it is a easy to work with. Um, everybody can do woodworking, and you don't need much expensive tooling. And uh, the second reason, of course, is it is uh, rather cheap. So um, if you are seriously considering building a boat, you should become aware of the fact that the actual uh, expenditure starts when the boat is already finished. You know? So if you, have to, if you have to stretch your building dollars, uh, um, this is a good material to work with because the expenditure only comes at the end when you have to put in the, the engines, the electronics, the rig and all these things. Uh, well, negatives, of course, is if you, uh, 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 if you have any serious damage, then you have to make sure you get out of the water quickly to make a repair, let the wood dry out. But, I mean, nor normally you don't get yourself into that situation where you have a hull fracture. And of yeah. course, wood, of course, then wood fracture, whereas uh, steel and aluminum would give in. Yeah? But then again, fiberglass also fractures. And it's not so easy to disturb it. If someone's looking at a hull that's, or at a boat that's built out of this type of material, what are things to look for and things to avoid when they're looking at them? Yeah. Well, I actually have no experience looking at other boats which were built this way, but I would certainly look for damages, you know, if water has gotten into the structure, because as long as the structure is covered with epoxy and fiberglass, it's protected. The wood is completely sealed off any environmental negative influences. And, uh, and of course, when there is damage, water gets in. And, and, and eventually, if that's a long-standing problem, the wood would start to, uh, to oh. foul. Like if someone's looking at different hulls, would you recommend this as a type, or? Well, and, it, like, and like, what are uh, what are your favorite things about it? You right. Know? Well, obviously, I, obviously, I chose this method, and I'm quite content with it today, um, because it's given me uh, the opportunity to own a big boat. Um, it depends, I believe, first of all, where you want to go. If you go to northern or very far down southern latitudes like like the uh, Antarctica or if you go into the polar area where you meet growler ice and all these things I would probably look for a very sturdy steel boat or aluminum um, I originally had the intention to go to these areas but I think with this boat I won't displacement we didn't yeah. mention yet uh, the displacement here is about uh, unloaded it's about maybe 25 tons that's, that comes from the sheer size, because 65 feet is not small. But I've seen that uh, other catamarans this size built from aluminum, they weigh around uh, 40 tons. Well, actually I built the boat in six years, which is um, a sh relatively short time for this size of a project. Um, the typical building times are much longer. Uh, but in, in all fairness, We'd, have, we'd also have to mention that I spent a lot of time in the designing process and pre-thinking things. And if you add all these years together, uh, the, the, it took me a substantially longer time. Um, I, um, 
uh, I uh, spent time at first to build uh, plywood models to see if I fully correctly understood the plans and how they were meant to be. Uh, I built two of those models. One was only like a, a study model where I was looking at how, you, how and where to put um, say uh, 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 plugs, light switches, antenna outlets, etc. etc. The other one was actually with one which I completed with a full hull so I could make floating tests. So after I had those I digitized the plans. The plans were non-digital then because that was about like maybe 20 years ago that I bought them. And I digitized them and I also spent time constructing a numeric mill, a computer-driven mill, which was like a second man when I was working. The mill was milling the plywood sheets and, and I was doing some other works. And it also added to the precision, of course. Okay, uh, the sandwich method, method is essentially that you have, um, that you have the plywood and the plywood is being glued together with the epoxy because uh, that's a pretty good glue and it also seals the wood. Um, like all wood that is unsealed, uh, that, that, that is, um, say, not covered with fiberglass, like furniture and stuff, where you can actually see the wood, is cov it's covered with epoxy anyways, so it doesn't pick up any moisture. And, um, and then, as I said, I would apply the fiberglass, uh, many layers of fiberglass, uh, they, whereas then the, um, the, the plywood part becomes the core of the sandwich. And this way it's exceptionally strong. And uh, where I considered it necessary, for example, to support the mast foot, uh, I also put in some steel bars. Uh, so I think I have a very reliable, sturdy, but also heavy boat. If someone's looking at a boat to buy, would you recommend having like a core sample drilled in the hulls? And if so, yes. what <laughs> Yeah, so this, is, this is a good question actually. Yes, I would, I would recommend that. Uh, we have incidentally been in Greece and we had um, somebody next to us with a catamaran. I'm not going to give you the brand, but it's a well-known brand and he had core samples. And uh, taken from the hull, from the underwater section, and the, um, this was a foam sandwich of course. But the, the uh, uh, fiberglass layer was not much more than one millimeter, maybe two at the most, on either side. Yeah? And I don't trust these boats very much. I mean, this is where you see that they, you know, how they save the weight, but also how they save money in the building process. Yeah? But they are fast. They are fast, they of course, because they are lighter. Not yeah. heavy. They, mm. This is not a sporty sailing boat. This one. No, and we are, but we are not sporty sailors. It's a boat to live mm. on and to get mm. from here to there on the sailing. Yeah, which uh, brings me back to your question, which is the right boat for which person? And you can never answer, answer that um, in general. It depends on what the people want to do. You know, if they're sporty sailors, if they're weekend sailors, then they would perhaps go for a light fiberglass boat. But if they, if they circumnavigate, uh, the, these people usually don't care about speed because they spend most of the time uh, anchoring and looking at the land and the people, etc. Yeah, and if, if you if you make it to the Caribbean three days earlier is unimportant to these people. Well, all the uh, all the typical uh, all, all the uh, building methods that you cover here have their pros and cons. Yeah, yeah. Like steel rusts, but steel is an honest material, as they say. You see where there is trouble. Now, with his boat, aluminum, you don't see the trouble until it's corroded through. Yeah. yeah. But you have seen the how the, we say the aluminum flourishes. Yeah. The little bubbles, etc. Yeah. And you cannot really control that. Yeah. So this is how you can. Um, where, where you can see how it is made. We got two layers of plywood here, nine millimeter each, and this is a very strong construction. Here you can see how the uh, curvatures are made. There are essentially two strips of plywood which are uh, overlayered um, diagonal and uh, to give the added strength, and then it's laminated over, of course, again. Yeah. But this is all this is all strips of plywood that you can fix or make nice curvatures, which you can really not make out of any other material. Of course, fiberglass you can, but there you need a mold. Uh, but with steel and uh, aluminum, of course, you cannot do that if you are just a uh, non-professional builder. It's not possible. And everybody who's considering getting a boat, either way, either building it or buying it, uh, do so. Don't waste time. It adds a lot to your happiness in life. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, 
receive postcards from our ports of call and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.